Last week in worship, I spoke about the challenges of sharing our authentic self with the world. It takes a while to identify those pieces of ourselves that are unique and maybe uncomfortable for other people. Eventually we come to terms with them and we even become grateful for those pieces because they shape our perspective. I'm grateful for having been raised in a Unitarian church, even though in Oklahoma, it gave me a slightly different view of the world. I'm grateful for the experience of being gay and having a window into systemic oppression. I'm grateful for the education I've pursued over the years and for the many, many teachers who have nurtured my curiosity. I'm grateful for the way I've been impacted by my family from childhood all the way through the conversation I had with my dad on the phone last week. Along the way, there have been forks in the road to becoming who I am. Uh, for example, part of the ordination process is to do a year of internship in a congregation. 13 or 14 years ago, I did my internship with Orange Coast UU in Costa Mesa. The other congregation I was considering for an internship was in the suburbs of New York City. That was a major fork in the road 13 years ago. It wasn't an intentional or obvious choice that I made back then to become a Californian. And today I have no idea what my life would look like had I headed east instead of west. Our journeys shape us. They shape our perspective on the world. So I wanna ask, who are the people or situations that have made you who you are? What pieces of your story are you grateful for contributing to the amazing, unique person that you are today? Obviously, parents and the really early stuff makes a big impact. There's also a long list of moments and decisions, even coincidences, that have formed you. Now, if you will, imagine an absence of some of those people or those events. It feels a little bit scary, but trust me for a moment and take this exercise one step farther. Imagine not just an absence of those events and people, but imagine the opposite having happened. Imagine way back as a young person being recognized or encouraged in a different direction. Imagine having a deep certainty of faith and finding profound kindness from a more conservative religious neighbor. Imagine living and seeing things through the identity of a person of a different race or different socioeconomic class or different sexual orientation or different gender. The world we can only imagine would look very, very different through those lenses. In our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we pride ourselves on independent thought and that's a beautiful thing but sometimes we take it too far. Sometimes we delude ourselves into thinking that we are solely responsible for our identity or our perspective. In fact, a long, long, long string of people and events and coincidences and accidents have shaped our lives and our ideas. There's an old saying that resonates with me more every year. There, but for the grace of God go I. I looked it up this week and found that it's attributed to John Bradford from the mid 16th century in England. As he watched prisoners being led to public execution, he said, there, but for the grace of God goes John Bradford. This phrase has come to mind for me recently as the Welcoming Neighbors Home team 
works to address the housing crisis and to end homelessness in South Orange County. There, but for the grace of God, go I. Many of the volunteers with Friends of Orange County detainees got to know people in immigration detention through visiting them on a regular basis. After getting to know their story, volunteers come to realize that although their lives unfolded very differently, they're not all that different deep down. We do a pretty decent job of having compassion for folks who have been dealt a raw deal in life. Compassion isn't just for those that we assume are less fortunate. As we remember that long list of circumstances that shaped us, as we remember that as much of life is what happens to us as it is what we do, might we also find some compassion for those whose opinions are different from our own? Now, don't mistake my call for compassion as moral relativism. We're not debating the idea that some people are inherently more valuable than others. There's no place for racism, sexism, or homophobia. We're committed to fight passionately for justice and equality wherever we can. And I'm proud to be part of a faith tradition that takes that commitment to justice seriously. Our history of Unitarianism and Universalism, though, is not perfect. Decade after decade, a handful of leaders with clearer vision of justice have dragged the rest of our denomination forward. Not so long ago, we debated whether or not to perform weddings for same-sex relationships. We debated whether or not to ordain LGBT clergy. We debated whether or not to ordain women. Before that, we debated whether or not women should be voting. And yes, Unitarian Universalists debated whether or not the abolition of slavery was something that we should take on or if it was just too politically divisive. We celebrate the progressive leaders of our history and conveniently forget the work they did to drag our tradition forward was slow and tiresome. I lift up that history as a reminder that a whole lot of learning took place. A whole lot of learning is still taking place for each of us. I hope I'm still learning. I hope my perspective is broadening. And as we learn and grow, we share that new knowledge with the world. This has been a horrifying year for America and for much of the world. COVID-19 has been ruthless. An uprising of white supremacy, sexism, and general bigotry have been shocking. And there's a tremendous need to keep pushing toward the goals of equality and justice. Here's the deal though. Slinging mud is not going to get us where we want to go. Changing other people is really difficult stuff. A good place to start is to consider how we are persuaded into a different belief <clears throat> or a different way of acting. I'm willing to bet that ridicule doesn't make you lean forward to hear a little bit more of what the other person says. Ridicule <clears throat> name calling, being dismissed as stupid, mean, or immoral. For me, when I catch the slightest hint of any of that stuff going on, I either stuff my ears full of cotton or I armor up and prepare to fight back. They say you can catch more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. 
The fourth principle of our Unitarian Universalist Association is a commitment to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. To me, that suggests two options. One is facts, data, detailed information and research. The other is compelling personal stories, not other people's stories that you have heard, but stories of your own feelings and experience. Like I said last week, we talked a lot about the value and importance of sharing your story with the world. It's strangely hard work. It takes a hell of a lot of courage to be vulnerable, especially with people that disagree with you. I'm actually not sure which is easier, sharing your story or presenting a coherent argument informed by reliable facts. But that's what we're called to do. You've probably heard Unitarian Universalism described as liberal religion. Liberalism in that sense is not aligned with a modern political party. <clears throat> in the experiment of American democracy, liberalism evolved into investment in laws that protect equality and rights for individuals. Religious liberalism, though, is even older than that. Rooted in the Protestant Reformation, religious liberalism is a commitment to freedom of thought and expression. Liberalism is a commitment to the free exchange of ideas and a belief, or maybe better, a hope, that through sharing our ideas together, we can discern the truth. Our principles call us to do better than slinging insults at people we disagree with. Our principles call us to engage, to tell our stories, to share information, and to attempt to understand the stories and information that are shared with us. Engaging with those we disagree with doesn't have to look like a polite conversation over a spot of tea necessarily. Sharing our story could look like art or film that's deeply confrontational. Sharing information may be using the strategy of civil disobedience to demonstrate the systemic racism of policing in America. There are many, many strategies for telling our stories and sharing good information. But discerning the truth has to be the driving for focus. It's a very tall order, these values that we espouse the inherent worth and dignity of every person. A free and responsible search for truth and meaning. It's a very tall order. At the end of the day, our disagreement has to be about something other than winning. If we're in this to win rather than to discern the truth, we are all going to lose. Amen. Amen.